The Mobile County Public Schools presents Homeroom. Hi, and welcome to Homeroom, where we introduce you to the students and the educators who make Mobile County Public Schools a wonderful school system. I'm your host, Renee Phillips, Director of Communication for Mobile County Public Schools. We've had some excitement in our school system with Mr. Threadgill coming on as superintendent just over a year ago. And one of the things that he's done is he's redone our curriculum and instruction division, and he's changed it into our teaching, learning, and assessment. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to some of the leaders in that new division and kind of tell you what we're doing to improve education in Mobile County Public Schools. So joining me now, I have Michelle McClung. She is the Director of Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. Um, so tell us, what's this excitement? I mean, I've seen it at the Teacher Institute. T teachers just seem really excited now with some of the changes that are taking place. Have you noticed that? I have noticed that. Um, we had um, a lot of um, great spirit shown at the pep rally at the opening of school, and um, the teachers are reaching out to us with just very positive attitudes and um, um, wanting to collaborate and give input and, and you know, help us make some really good changes for the system. Okay, and you were a principal, and mm -hmm. you've moved to central office, so tell me what, I know that you have schools first and foremost in your mind, having come directly from a school, so what's that like at central office now, and what are your goals um, to do to, to help the schools? Well, our goal, one of our goals is to calibrate what we're doing across the district so that we can provide more equity um, in education and the services that are provided to all of our students. And um, we're tr just trying to calibrate quality instruction and enhance and lift up our teachers so that um, all of our students are um, receiving the very best education they can receive, no matter the school they attend. And one thing I've heard you guys talk about is you don't want them to think, oh, no, central office is coming. You want them to think, oh, central office is here to help us. Right. So our role is that of a support team to partner with the principal and provide any and all support needed or necessary at each school and customize that for each school um, so that we can meet their needs. Every school is unique and different, and each school has their own strengths and their own areas that where they can improve. And so um, my, my staff and I, you know, want to try to customize uh, services that we offer to each school based off what the principal, you know, needs. And I've heard that you talk about that as being prescriptive, correct? Like yes. every school is different. So tell us about that. So, um, yeah, each school, like, you know, our high schools have signature academies and, um, you know, we have magnet schools and then we have, you know, um, high performing schools. And then we have some schools, unfortunately, that are on the failing list that are in a transformation progress that we call Path to Excellence. So, um, you know, we try to um, look at all of our superstars, our teachers that are just really doing a, a wonderful job, and we've um, pulled a cadre of those teachers together and try to help them, let them help us, you know, meet the needs of the district as well, either through helping us write curriculum or calibrate our pacing guides or help us write tests. Um, that are common throughout the district as well. But we're just trying to utilize all the resources uh, and our wonderful teachers. And, um, you know, again, they also provide professional development um, too. So we're trying to pull, pull all of our uh, resources together to help all of the schools because we're so large. You know, every school is different and each school has its own um, personality and culture and um, but one thing that I've just been very surprised and excited is to see the commonality of all the teachers being very excited about this school year and what they're doing. Because mm -hmm. we have wonderful teachers. Yes, we do. We have the best teachers, and, and they are really working very hard to meet the needs of our students and, um, and, and teach. Mm -hmm. And so one of your goals, too, is to give them the tools they need to do that, correct? Yes. So we have a new math program this year, uh, Ready Math, and, and we've provided all of the tools for that. We've also implemented iReady for reading and math uh, for K through 8 grade. So that's another tool we've put in the teacher's hands as well. So what is iReady? I know as a parent I've heard our schools mm -hmm. talk about I, I ready for math mm -hmm. and reading, correct? Mm -hmm. So what is that? It's a it's kind of like a diagnostic prescriptive uh, computerized program. It assesses the level where the student is and then it has a series, um, well it's, it's actually got a few layers, but one layer is that um, the computer can generate lessons to help close the gap if a child is behind um, their assigned grade level um, they can you know close the gap by working through those assignments online but um, it also has other features for the teachers tools for the teachers to use um, it helps the teachers 
kind of sort, you know, student strengths and students' weaknesses mm -hmm. and group them together so that they can do um, more planned and um, small group lessons. So I know sometimes when mm -hmm. we hear about tests, it's like, oh no, not another test. But for this, this really is something that teachers mm -hmm. use to inform their classroom instruction. It correct. Will, it will be something that they use to help help push even we've got a lot of students that are even advanced mm -hmm. and um, if you've got a third grader that's reading on a fifth grade level then this program will also help keep them on a track of making progress too mm -hmm. so it, it, it is a program for all students I've heard you talk about it's the intervention and also the enrichment so right. you know where students are on the line and, and mm -hmm. the spectrum and what to provide for those mm -hmm. students what about performance matters what is that okay so we have a new program too that we're implementing uh, performance matters it's a, um, it's a platform that we use to create common assessments. So if we're wanting to calibrate the expectations across the district, uh, we'll start with our assessments and grading um, of, of how we grade students. So um, our division is uh, taken back on champion, championing EQTs, our end of the quarter assessments. And those, those assessments are calibrated to our pacing guides and you know, the EQT is the same from one school to the other now. So we use Performance Matters to write those assessments. With that came a, um, a, an assessment bank, mm -hmm. and so uh, we use that assessment bank. But um, the beauty of that is um, it, the, an analytic program that comes with it. So right. once the students take the test and we scan them in and get their scores, it breaks down each score by the, what skills the students are strong in, and what skills the students need more um, intervention with. And it helps keep make sure all of our students are learning what they're supposed to yes. learn according to the state yes. standards and it helps the teachers know where they can, what they need to work on yes. with each student. Well, we have to go to commercial, but when we come back, I'll introduce you to some more of the leaders in our new teaching, learning and assessment division at Mobile County Public Schools. When it comes to getting your child through school, at times, it can be overwhelming. What school to choose, what classes to take, how to apply for college. To help answer these questions and more, we would like to invite you to join us on Parent Connect as we take an in-depth look at some of the issues and concerns you may have about your child's education. So get connected with Parent Connect, weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. Hi, and welcome back to Homeroom. In Mobile County Public Schools, we like to say that we're learning today, leading tomorrow. And today I'm introducing you to a new division that we have in, in our school system called Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. It is being led by our director, Michelle McClung. And joining us here, I have Dr. Jones. And can you tell me your title? Because I know it's a big one, a long one. Yes, I'm, I'm the coordinator of professional learning, special projects, and innovation. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, it means a lot of things. Um, we've had the opportunity to bring in some additional professional development, really trying to focus in on building capacity within our teachers and leaders and staff. And so that's one part of the job. Um, special projects includes a lot of different things, um, assisting with overseeing our response to instruction process. Um, uh, several new initiatives. We have um, a leadership academy this year, um, helping to oversee new teacher academy. So really just a lot of different ways to support the system. So we talked about in the first segment that your job is to make sure we have the tools in the classroom that the teachers need, that leaders need. So how important is this part of the teaching, learning, and assessment? It's very important. Um, we're building capacity and trying to strengthen and enhance what's in place so that we have the best teachers in the nation and mm -hmm. um, they're they're doing a great job so and I know I went to the ice cream social <laughs> so the new teacher Academy that's one thing that we do we hire teachers and we want them to have a network so that they know they're not in it alone right, right. so tell us what you've been doing with the new teachers um, so we we've tried to shake that up a little bit this year we did start with an ice cream social that was voluntary for teachers to come but we welcomed some of our new teachers to that and that was more of just a, a time to get to know one another um, and just have a laid back time together just to welcome them to the system and then since then um, we've had a, a day where we brought them back for professional learning mm -hmm. and they went through a, a training called cultural responsiveness and they'll come back two more times throughout the year as well so um, like you said we're just trying to build this 
cohort so that they can get to know the people who are um, in their same field mm -hmm. and give them some people that they can collaborate with and hopefully build some um, good relationships that mm -hmm. will help them sustain through this career. And also I imagine it's so that they know that we support them, correct. correct? And so we're supporting them from their first year on the job up until when they take these leadership roles as a principal, assistant principal. So tell us about the Leadership Academy. So the Leadership Academy this year, we have 30 participants and they're ranging from, we have some principals, some are new principals, some are seasoned principals. We have assistant principals and we also have some aspiring leaders. And uh, we're gonna meet throughout the year and um, working through the professional standards for educational leaders, but it's a very interactive training. And again, it's really building this cohort of leaders. A lot of times, you know, the leaders are, you're in your schools and mm -hmm. there's so much to do as a leader of, of a school. Uh, but we have to remember that we have to be the lead learners as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's what part of this is about. And you're both former principals. So is this the kind of, um PD you would have wanted as a principal that you could have used? Yes, I actually attended the last leadership two-day session and it was some of the best professional development I've had. We had the flipping group come out and um, they we did an assessment, a self-assessment of where we think we are in certain areas in leadership and then we sent it out to people who've worked for us to give us their perspective in those same areas. Mm -hmm. So you learn a lot about where you feel like you are and then where you're perceived to be by those that um, you lead. And mm -hmm. so um, it's, a, it's a very wonderful uh, process that really inspires a lot of reflection. And you reflect and hopefully improve yourself. Yes. Right. Right? <laughs> Which is really important as a leader, really for anyone, to be reflective. And so um, it's been a great experience thus far, and I look forward to continuing to work with those leaders throughout the year. Okay, and then part of your title is innovation, and we hear that word a lot in education, but I think in Mobile County we really are doing it. So tell us about some of the programs. I know you're working on Barton Academy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I'm really excited to be on board with working with Barton Academy. Um, this is an exciting time to join that movement because we're looking at a possible opening for the 2021 school year. And so, um, with Barton Academy, that's going to be the Barton Academy for Advanced uh, World Studies and really integrating um, the cultural aspect um, and also just bringing in those innovations with collaborative labs, entrepreneurship, and so it's going to be one of our magnet schools um, coming in the next couple of years. And there's a lot of excitement with that because you have this building. It was the first public school building in the state of Alabama. It's been empty for about 10 years. And I think Mobile wants it to be an educational facility again. And so are you are you sensing the excitement? Are you hearing about it? Or? I am. Um, it, I believe that even, you know, not just for our school community, but for the community as a whole, um, mm -hmm. for the city of Mobile, it's great to have this historic landmark be utilized again for our most valuable asset for our students. And it would be a middle school? It will be a middle school, actually sixth through ninth grade. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and it will fall within the magnet schools. And um, I believe the idea is that, you know, if they go through ninth grade, then we have all these wonderful signature academies that begin in 10th grade. And so they will be fully prepared to transition into one of our signature academies. That sounds fantastic, and I know we're going to hear more about that as we get ready to open Barton Academy, um, hopefully 2021. And so we have to break for commercial, and when we come back, I'll introduce you to more of the leaders in the teaching, learning, and assessment division of Mobile County Public Schools who are really doing remarkable things in our schools. Each month, more than 90 guns are reported stolen from unlocked vehicles creating the potential of serious injury or death. Lock it up. Many violent acts and crimes are committed with stolen guns. Lock it up. According to ATF, stolen guns pose a substantial threat to public safety. Lock it up. Be responsible. Take time to record your handgun serial number and secure it from thieves. Lock it up. Lock it up for me. Hi, and welcome back to Homeroom. 
We've had some exciting changes in Mabel County Public Schools with our new Teaching, Learning and Assessment Division and today I'm introducing you to some of the people who are making sure our schools are staying top notch and that are helping some of the schools that need some help and I've got Michelle McClung who's the Director of Teaching, Learning and Assessment and now I have Helen Miles and she's the Academic Coordinator. So when we say teaching and learning, you are teaching and learning, correct? You are the supervisor of all the supervisors of math and science and um, reading and what am I missing? Social, Social studies. studies. Mm -hmm. So what, how important is it that we just stay top notch in all those areas? Well, it's very important because all of our students, we want them all to get the best education possible. So what we're trying to do is make sure that our basic guides fit and that everyone gets the same opportunities as they go along. So that is our major focus, is all the supervisors are working together to make sure that the pacing guys, they have curriculum specialists that work with them, and during their time together, they focus on making sure that the pacing guys are correct and that they are aligned to the, the content areas. So how does that work? So the State Department of Education, they set the pacing guide, so we know by third grade, second quarter, you need to be here, correct? But then do, no. do we know? Okay, correct me. Go they ahead. don't give us a pacing guide, <laughs> okay. Okay. but they, they give us a standard. Okay. And what the uh, content area specialists and curriculum supervisors do is that they decide what gets taught first and they decide on the progression so we have for that year. So freedom there to yes. figure out what we're teaching in the classrooms. Yes. And so what's that like as a curriculum supervisor to come up with what specifically can be taught or should be taught? Or? Well, a lot of them, they look at um, the best approach to it mm -hmm. and they try to make sure that they align it so that the students get a better understanding as they go along. Especially in mathematics, you know, there is a specific, you have to learn how to add before you can multiply and those different things. There is an order to it. So everything, they try to put it in a specific order so that the students will get a better understanding and be able to comprehend what they're trying to teach. And then we want to be innovative because we have to keep our kids interested in it, correct? Yes, yes. So they add in various, um, they put in the technology needed. They try to provide them with other resources to keep the students engaged. So all of that is a part of the pacing that they give them. And so as a parent, I know I hear EQT. So what is an EQT? Our EQTs are the end of the quarter tests and um, our supervisors have created those for the district um, and aligned them to the pacing guide. So if there's a standard in the pacing guide, then we have a few three, four questions per standard um, on the EQT um, to, to assess the student's knowledge and whether or not they've mastered that skill. And, and we use those results, like I said, we'll have those um, data um, analytics um, after the test available to all the teachers and the principals so that they can you know use that information to guide um, second quarter instruction. So who all takes the EQT? We have from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so all of the students will take it. And is it in every subject or? We have it in the core subjects. Okay. Math, science, social studies, and um, ELA. And what that does that lets us see that the kids are on the right track. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as a parent, what can I do to help make sure that my child is ready for those EQTs? I know you get it in the newsletter, it's EQT week, so what do you recommend that the parents do? Make sure they get the proper rest that they need, get them up and get them breakfast in the morning, and also making sure they're keeping up with the assignments as they go along. Because the teachers are trying to prepare them for it as well, so they will give them different things that they'll need to prepare at night mm -hmm. as well. So do the, the list that your mm -hmm. teacher gives you, it's, it's, it's there for a reason, right? Yes, exactly. And I know the state has just adopted a new test, correct? Mm -hmm. right. And what's this, the ACAP? ACAP. The well, ACAP. And you guys played a role in it, right? Yes. So last week, um, Ms. Miles and I were at the State Department working um, to review test questions uh, that they um, want to put on the ACAP for this spring. And so we went through the questions to see if they were aligned to the standards. And if they weren't, we helped revise those questions. And so it was a, it was a long process, but I think we, we, we learned yes, a lot we about progression. Mm -hmm. We both worked in the mathematics area, um, and so we, we worked a lot with the math test, and I think we feel pretty good about the test, that it's a fair test. And so will this be the one that the report cards are based on? Yes, for next yeah. year. So I'm sure we'll be sending stuff out to the parents. Is it in the spring, or? It will be in the spring. This mm -hmm. time it's just one, one test. That's an so, improvement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll take it in the spring, but we will be sending things out as soon as we get the information from the state. 
Okay, and I know another thing you've been working on is with the reading specialists. So can you tell me about our reading program? Um, our ARI reading specialist, mm -hmm. yes. We have 25 ARI reading specialists and one lead specialist. Um, they are in 25 schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we tiered the schools so that they're in the lowest um, tier. And what they do is they provide professional development for the reading teachers. They model for the teachers and they provide strategies for intervention for those teachers. And how important is it that our students are reading at grade level? Oh, that is number one for all of us is to make sure that our students are reading on grade level. Mm -hmm. And how can parents, what can, what can parents do at home to help with that? Actually helping them to read, letting them sit down and read, um, creating that interest for the students because that has been one of the things where the students, they're just not interested in reading. So allowing them to read at home, read to their parents, um, read things that are fun to them as well. Mm -hmm. We so. put a lot of facts on our Facebook page. Our division has a Facebook page, Teaching, Learning, and Assessment, um, MCPSS Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. And one of the facts we recently put on there was just the, the progress a child can make if a parent reads with their child 20 to 30 minutes a night, it has just an astronomical impact on um, th their educational career. So mm -hmm. we encourage all of our parents to read with their children, listen to their children read, mm -hmm. and, and encourage their children. I'd actually demand my child read every single night mm -hmm. um, as a routine. It helps their vocabulary. Yes. And is it good to, for them to pick out books they want to read, too? Yes. And not just say, read this book here? Mm -hmm. um, and I know we hear a lot about math. And, oh, math is different than it was like when we were in school. But what do you tell parents when they're the doing homework? The basics are still there. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. still need those basics. Um, we encourage our parents to allow the students to work at home, do a little homework, still learn their timetables, all of those things, mm -hmm. they're still necessary for our students. Mm -hmm. So those basics are there and that, that really hasn't changed. Yeah, and I can mm -hmm. tell with my boys, I, I love the thinking that you're having them do, how they just, mm -hmm. not only just memorizing the facts, but right. they're actually learning the concepts behind it and how to group numbers. I think it's yes. phenomenal what you so guys I think are doing. Historically, I think the teachers have only ever had time to just touch the surface of each standard, mm -hmm. and we're encouraging teachers to go deeper within each standard and, and get to that thinking um, for the students. Well, that's great. We have to break for commercial and when we come back, we'll talk some more to our teaching, learning, and assessment division. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this and less of this. Hi and welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about some of the innovative things that we're doing inside our classrooms in Mobile County Public Schools and a lot of this is because of our new Division of Teaching, Learning and Assessment. So I've got Michelle McClung who is the director of that division and Michelle Collier who is the coordinator of instructional technology. So we hear a lot about digital literacy. What does that mean? Well, actually, digital literacy is um, something we've been working on for many, many years. The last five years, we've had a digital literacy project within our schools. We partnered with Discovery Education to really encourage our children to gain those um, digital literacy skills that are necessary to be smart and safe on the Internet, but also really utilizing the technology that, that is available for them. Um, but with the new te state technology course of study is called digital literacy and computer science standards that are released from um, the state the first time in 10 years that we have new standards from technology. So that's something that we've been working on, like I said, for the last five years mm -hmm. here within the district, but the new standards were just released. So we've been uh, rolled those out through Nearpod. Uh, for our teachers and our students to use. Because one thing about technology, it could be used for good or bad. Absolutely. Right? And so we're Absolutely. trying to hone that those good skills. Yes. yes. So what does it look like in a classroom when you're seeing technology being used for good? So we hope that students are using their devices, that they're using activities in Nearpod or Google Classroom, that they're actually using their devices and engaged in a lesson. They may be using Discovery Education, for example, but they may be um, building a project. They may be building a, um, a, an activity using that Nearpod lesson, that they're engaged in some kind of activity that demonstrates a learning. Uh, from that lesson. So from the curriculum practice, maybe it's math or reading, but they're building that lesson out to really demonstrate they're learning not just with a test, but with an activity that builds a project. Mm -hmm. So it's really about project-based learning. 
And I've seen that as a mom in my young elementary students, that they will use the technology to research a topic, yep. they'll put it in a storyboard, and then they'll stand up in front of their class and present Absolutely. On, on a famous American or on a certain animal. So is that the kind of learning that we're that doing? That is absolutely. You're describing 1,000% the digital literacy project that's taking place in our schools. So that's the way to really transform the learning so that it's not that, you know, the, uh, the old way would have been that you go home and you make a project on a poster, right? Mm -hmm. So we want them to build it in a digital way where we're not just talking about Word and PowerPoint and Excel, but that we're really creative in our mm -hmm. ways to, and that's why I say I don't talk about just one tool, I talk about a lot of different tools. Mm -hmm. uh, they may build it in a website, like mm -hmm. in a Google site, or they may build it in an actual lesson using Discovery's board builder, but they may build just something completely creative, like uh, Prezi, they may have used any kind of tool to demonstrate whatever their topic was from mm -hmm. their curriculum. So instructional technology is not something separate. It's a part of the instruction from the classroom teacher. And whether we like it or not, our kids are inundated with technology. Yes. I know one of the trends now is the virtual goggles. So tell mm -hmm. us what you're doing with those. Okay, so we're trying to really capture the attention of our teachers and with professional development to put a new edge to it. Um, Twofold reason for that. One, um, I can we can um, have and host a professional development um, topic for a mass number of teachers without having to pay for substitutes or you know have a venue to host them all but so we've created a virtual platform it's kind of a blend of augmented reality and virtual reality but we have a platform and a virtual training room that we can portal teachers in and they come in as their avatar uh -huh. and then uh, we can moderate the discussion they can raise their hand through the program to ask a question and we can put them in a queue for a question and answering session also within that platform, they have tools embedded in that we can show a slideshow, we can do a movie, we can demonstrate a lesson. And so um, one of the things that we're just trying to do now is to get that up and running so that we can um, um, get PD out for our so, teachers, which is really progressive. So are they sitting somewhere with goggles on with goggles and they're really, it's yes. like they're so with imagine, you? Uh -huh. so imagine, you know, you need, to show, you need to talk to somebody for 15 minutes. Uh -huh. They don't need to drive to central office to talk to them for 15 or 20 minutes when you can share something with them and start a discussion with them mm -hmm. that will really will fire off mm -hmm. an idea or a thought for them to mm -hmm. take that and run with it. Mm -hmm. And emails and webinars just aren't exciting anymore. Yeah. So yeah. the virtual reality training is really, really exciting and it's yeah. unique. We piloted this with our principals mm -hmm. the week before school started and just the enthusiasm and excitement we had with the principals was, was unreal. Yeah, it was so incredible. it was absolutely unimaginable that we would be at this point in time with technology to yeah. utilize it uh, for like the those purposes. The future is here. Yes. So <laughs> and is this something that we'll see in the classroom too? Yes. yes. How can we use it in the classroom? Um, they have virtual field trips for our middle school and high schoolers um, at, after the age of 13. Uh, they can have access to the goggles so um, they can go on a virtual field trip. On these goggles you can go anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and see things as if you're there you know in at the present time. So um, and Discover Education has an app within the Oculus Go, mm -hmm. so that is a great place for wonderful resources for our students as we're a partner with them already, and that's a great place for them to explore and also view content mm -hmm. that's instructional for them um, so that teachers can use that with their students in those centers. So, so we we're really talking about center-based instruction as yeah, well. And they can gain experiences. We had principals ride a roller coaster, but think about all the students have never ridden a roller coaster before because they were too scared or didn't have the opportunity for vacation. Mm -hmm. Now they can do a virtual roller coaster. It feels just like you're on a real roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And um, your stomach drops and everything. And then they can write about that experience. Right. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. Well, that sounds fantastic. And I think it's an exciting time to be a student in Mobile County Public Schools, an exciting time to be a teacher. And thank you so much for what you're doing in teaching, learning, and, assess and assessment. That's all the time we have here for Homeroom. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>